You know what helps you get over the pain of losing the ACC tournament championship on Saturday night? Locking up a one seed in the NCAA tournament on Sunday. You are Locked on Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, what's up? It's Monday, March 18th, 2024. Welcome into the madness. Welcome into the Locked on Tar Heels podcast, the only daily North Carolina show out there. I'm your host, Isaac Shade, and you're joining us at the place to get your Tar Heels content every single day. Thanks for making us your first listen or watch, and special shout out to all you everydayers out there. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job right now at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. Coming up on the show today, we are indeed going to start talking about March Madness and and what's coming up ahead for Carolina. We're going to go kind of big picture today. We'll get more nitty gritty uh, on previewing games and stuff like that as we get further into the week. But I just want to, I want today to situate this thing as we come off of the ACC tournament, as as we look ahead a little bit. I, I just want us to peek our head up above the clouds and take stock of things. So that's where we're going to start. Because here's what I mean. Wow. What a difference a year makes. I cannot tell you how nice it is to be recording a show right now, previewing what's going to happen this week in the NCAA tournament, instead of discussing Carolina declining an NIT invite so that they could focus on building their roster. That is what I was doing this time last year, sitting in this exact same seat. I was uh, challenging Carolina's decision to decline an NIT invite, basically saying I thought they should play. Now, turned out to be a good thing. They they got the roster going, but all of that now is water under the bridge because what are we sitting here talking about? Instead of, man, I wish Carolina was playing in the NIT. (laughs) We're saying the North Carolina Tar Heels are a one seed in the 2024 NCAA tournament. What a difference a year makes. I cannot tell you how nice it is to be recording a show talking about North Carolina being rewarded for a stellar regular season after four straight seasons of sub, you know, sub North Carolina standard. I can't tell you how nice it is after four of those from 2020 to 21 to 22 to 23. I can't tell you how nice it is to be talking about this to help get rid of the disappointment of Saturday night. And look, that that was tough, right? We all went through that together. I I thought, you thought, that North Carolina was going to beat North Carolina State, right? Like, I think we can all admit that. I got no problems admitting it because I thought it was going to happen, and it just didn't. Carolina didn't win that basketball game, and they didn't look great doing so. But there's new life. And there's a rebirth, and these Tar Heels are a one seed. Now, to that point, the biggest question I've received in the last 24 hours or so since Carolina lost to NC State is this. Are the Tar Heels still the fourth one seed? Because here's what happened. North Carolina had been kind of tucked behind Arizona and Tennessee for a while. And I I think the Tar Heels were third behind them. Obviously we don't and won't ever know, but then North Carolina went in on the last Saturday of the regular season to Cameron indoor stadium beat Duke that same night, Arizona who kind of had the inside track at that point lost at USC. And so heading into the week, everyone was thinking, all right, this is between Tennessee and North Carolina for this fourth one seed. There's a couple other teams with outside shots, you know, maybe Arizona still if if Carolina falls early, if Tennessee falls early and Arizona wins, right? We talked about that on together last Monday. And and I mentioned teams like Iowa State, maybe Marquette if if they could run through the Big East. Um but then here we go. 
Tennessee loses early in the SEC tournament. North Carolina gets to the ACC championship game, loses to NC State. But in the game literally right before that, Iowa State blitzed Houston, who was now the number two overall seed in this NCAA tournament. Now, when asked the question, are the Tar Heels still the fourth one seed? In our live postcast after the lost NC State, I said yes. Anytime somebody asked me on Twitter Saturday night or during the day Sunday, yes. Anytime somebody asked me that I encountered, are the Tar Heels still a one seed? Yes. The funny thing is that it's the two seed behind them that changed. I, I legit thought it was Tennessee, but then it changed, as I said, to Iowa State. But there was like there was concern after Carolina lost to NC State and, and after um, Iowa State won. Like, what is the committee going to value? What are they looking like, looking at? Because let's be honest, the resumes were pretty similar between the two teams, Carolina and Iowa State. The team that I thought all day Saturday or all night Saturday night and all day Sunday was the team riding right behind the Tar Heels in the selection committee's eyeballs. And the one thing I kept looking at as I came back to these two teams' resume, the one thing that really, truly separated them in any sort of meaningful way was the non-conference strength of schedule. At Ken Palm, when you look at it, North Carolina's non-con was 36th, non-con strength of schedule. Iowa State's finished 351st. That's out of 362 teams in Division I. So they're in the bottom 11 of the entire nation. Meanwhile, Carolina, that was also going to compete in a tough ACC, had the 36th best non-conference schedule, according to Ken Palm. And that was it. I looked at that and I said, I got no fear. The committee often talks about how teams that don't schedule difficult non-conference schedules are, are not elite in their eyeballs. And if they're push comes to shove between two similar resumes, those are the teams that are going to get dinged. And also, even when you look at regular, like total strength of schedule, it's closer, but still in Carolina's favor. Tar Heels were 21st in overall strength of schedule, while Iowa State was 37. Well, did the committee agree? Was that the separator? Well, let me share this with you. Um, you know, after after the bracket is revealed, somebody always interviews the committee chair. So Matt Norlander from CBS Sports did so. And he basically asked this question. When did North Carolina get placed as the final seat? He said, was it Saturday afternoon, like before the games? Was it Saturday night after the games or was it not until Sunday morning? And the committee chair, Charles McClellan, said this. I, I wrote down the actual quote. He said, Quote, we did place North Carolina in that number one seed on Friday. Interesting. That's where they started with the Tar Heels there. He said, we had an opportunity to scrub a couple of times and UNC ultimately stayed, meaning they, they rechecked and rechecked and retried, relooked at resumes and North Carolina kept staying there. He says they had a head to head over Tennessee and some of the teams that had fallen behind Tennessee. We looked at their matrix, and we compared that to Iowa State. They're an excellent team. They had an excellent run in the Big 12 tournament. But here we go. Here it is, folks, the critical part. As we said from day one, the entire season is critically important. When you look at the numbers, you have to start looking at things that differentiate these teams. One of the things that differentiated Iowa State versus North Carolina was, say it with me, that non-conference strength of schedule. We look at the entirety of the season. But we also had a lot of conversations and we had a significant amount of resources to look at. And ultimately, we felt like Iowa State, and here's the other thing, was properly placed as the eight overall. So it was indeed, as, as many of us thought, the non-conference strength of schedule that really put Carolina over the hump ahead of Iowa State. But here's the other thing. We had it wrong. Iowa State wasn't even close. They were closer to being a three than a one when all was said and done. North Carolina was the four overall. Then you had Tennessee five, Arizona six, Marquette seven, and then Iowa State at eight. So they're the last number two seed. Really, really interesting stuff there. So North Carolina, quite safely, it turns out, as the one seed over Tennessee, Arizona, Marquette, and then Iowa State. I mean, that's a Marquette team that has been without Tyler Kolek, their point guard, 
since the last two games of the regular season and who stumbled a little bit down the stretch. So really, really good stuff there from the Tar Heels. It is good to be back on top. Let's all breathe a sigh of relief, celebrate and rejoice together that that in itself is an achievement by far the best regular season um, and ACC postseason run of the Hubert Davis era thus far. So now we know what's ahead for Carolina. Sorta. Why? Well, Carolina is in one of those slashy situations where they will play the winner of one of the play-in games in Dayton from Tuesday night. It's either Wagner or Howard. What do we expect from round one? And what exactly is Carolina's history as a one seed? We'll answer all of that in just a second. Right after I tell you that this episode is brought to you by Nissan. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by those friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Yukon Huskies can only be described as an armada. This top-seeded team is as hardcore as it gets out there, so it's no wonder they've landed the top overall seed in the 2024 NCAA tournament. They're one of the favorites to win it all, despite four of the six Power Six Conference champions standing in their way in the East region. So take the Nissan Rogue, Pathfinder, or Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. This episode is also brought to you by our friends at Amazon Fire TV, your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug just right there into your existing TV to provide access to millions of movies and TV episodes. I have Amazon Fire TV sticks literally on every TV in my household because I love the simplicity of it. I love the layout. I love the user experience. It just makes sense to me. I also love their handy little remote that's got buttons that takes me straight to Disney Plus or Netflix or Amazon Prime TV, whatever it is. I love it so much. Fire TV also recently created Fire TV channels. To deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. And that includes all of us here at Locked On. They've also got great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. So check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't done so, you should. Trust me on that. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. For the 18th time since seeding started in 1979, the North Carolina Tar Heels are a one seed. And that, that's what we want to look at first are the, um, the, the teams that historically have been able to do this just like the Tar Heels. Here's what you need to know. North Carolina is one of just four schools to receive a one seed double digit times and Carolina has 18 of them. Not only that, Carolina has the most one seeds all time. The teams following behind them, the other three that have double digit one seeds, it's a host of teams you expect other blue bloods. Kansas is second with 15, Duke has 14 and Kentucky 12 of them. After that, it falls all the way off to Arizona and Virginia who are tied getting a one seed seven times. So what what North Carolina is doing is elite, elite, elite level. So really good stuff for the Tar Heels there, wrapping up uh, their 18th ever one seed. Now, uh, what about how Carolina has performed as a one seed? Well, let's just look at it at the top. The Tar Heels, as a one seed, each of their last five national championships have come as a one seed. The only one that hasn't is the 1957, and that's because seeding wasn't a thing yet. So the Tar Heels, every national championship they've won in the seeding era has come when they were a one seed. Let's just go chronologically. 1982, one seed. 1993, one seed. 05, one seed. 09, one seed, and 2017, they were a one seed. Now, it's no guarantee because obviously, as I said, Carolina has been the one seed 18 times and they've won uh, the, the championship five times as that one seed. So again, there's no guarantee, but it is, I mean, you'd rather be the one seed than not. 
and every championship they've won uh, in the seeding era has been as a one seed. So I love to see this. Now, we already know uh, when Carolina's first game is going to be. It's in Charlotte. It's on Thursday. If they win, they'll play again on Saturday. We don't know that time yet because what the, the networks wait to do is figure out what all the matchups are going to be uh, late Thursday night, and then they'll announce all that. So we only know Thursday's time at this point. And also, you don't know for sure that you're going to win. So Carolina Thursday in Charlotte at the Spectrum Center, 2.45 p.m. Eastern time, one of those weird afternoon games. So make plans to uh, go on a little coffee date maybe from, from your work or maybe just <coughs> call in sick as you're supposed to do. This game will be on CBS. Uh, on the call will be Brian Anderson and Jim Jackson with Ali LaForce there as the sideline reporter. What's nice is this game will come after the 8-9 matchup that, that's in the same pod with the Tar Heels, which, uh, if you've been paying attention, is Michigan State and Mississippi State. That's the 8-9 game ahead of the Tar Heels here. Now, uh, North Carolina, as I said earlier, is, is paired up with one of the play-in games, and that game is going to be Wagner, who won the Northeastern Conference, and Howard, who won the MIAC. Uh, that play-in game, if you're interested in watching it, by the way, is Tuesday at 6.40 Eastern on True TV. So that'll that'll actually kick off all four of the play-in games will be Carolina finding out their opponent. And then after that game, uh, we'll be able to, on Wednesday's show, begin thinking about that game more specifically. Now, here's what you need to know about Wagner and Howard. Obviously, we can get into whichever one Carolina will actually play but they are the two lowest rated teams in the field. Literally, they are numbers 67 and 68 as the committee seeded this thing. So either way, Carolina will be playing the worst team in the field on paper. Does that win you a basketball game? Absolutely not. But Carolina should take care of business here. Might I remind you that one seeds are 150 and two, 150 wins, two losses, all time against 16 seeds. However, let's do recognize that those two times have occurred in the last five tournaments. Obviously, last year, Purdue lost to Fairleigh Dickinson. And then in the 2018 tournament, Virginia lost to uh, UMBC before then turning around and winning the national championship th the next year. Will Purdue do follow the suit? We'll find out this year and see what happens. Frankly, I don't think so, but uh, they very well could. So it's no guarantee that Carolina will win that game against either Wagner or Howard. Uh, you know, with it happening now twice in the last five tournaments, we expect it to happen again. Uh, as we're seeing all these kind of upsets occur more frequently as we get more parity in basketball, uh, both from the transfer portal and from just teams being better. There's just more good basketball players out there. So just keep your eyes on that. But to some level, it is OK just because of those percentages winning 150 out of 152 games for us to go ahead and turn our attention a little bit. You and I can the coaching staff and the players can't, but we can start to look ahead a little bit to Michigan State and Mississippi State, which each provide different types of challenges. So that's going to be interesting to see. And so we'll get into that, obviously, as I said, later in the week. Now, the most looked ahead thing that we see is everybody and their brother, myself included saying what about the possibility of the Tar Heels facing Caleb Love and former assistant coach Steve Robinson in the Elite Eight because Arizona is the two seed in the West region with North Carolina. Look, it very well could happen. But let me say this. One seeds against two seeds in the Elite Eight is actually a, a, a less frequent occurrence, especially lately, than you might imagine. In fact, in each of the last three tournaments, there have been zero matchups in the uh, in the regional final round between a one and two seed. 2023, no. 2022, no. 2021, no. And in fact, obviously 2020, it didn't happen because there was no tournament, but it did happen in 2019, but just one. That was Duke and Michigan State. We know how that game turned out. Thank you very much, Spartans. We'd like to beat you if we play you this year, but thank you for beating Zion and the Blue Devils that year. It happened just once in 2018. That was Kansas and Duke, and it happened just once in 2017, 
That was the North Carolina Tar Heels and the Kentucky Wildcats. We all remember how that game turned out as well. Thank you very much, Mr. Luke May. So in the last six tournaments out of 24 available regional finals, it's happened just three times. That's one eighth of the time. So let's not rush ahead to assume that the Tar Heels and, and Arizona Wildcats are going to play and that it's going to be Caleb Love against RJ Davis. Now, what a crazy thing that would be if it did happen, but I, I just don't want to assume that it is. There's nothing saying for sure that Carolina will get there or Arizona will get there or both. But it would be very stressful for a lot of us. Probably the most stressed I've been for a basketball game since the Carolina Duke Final Four game. I'm trying to think if there would be other times, but I, I, I don't know what else would be in that territory. So we'll obviously uh, continue to think about and talk about that as things go. But again, there are no guarantees that Carolina and Arizona will play. Well, today, Monday, is not only the day after Selection Sunday, but also, don't see how this is a real thing, but it is. Today is the day that the basketball transfer portal officially opens. And y'all, it is way too early. We'll talk more about the transfer portal, though, coming up in just a second. Right after I tell you that this episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality candidate, quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs, which has the right tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. Thankfully, LinkedIn isn't just another job board. They have a vast network of more than a billion professionals, making it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing a ton of hats and might not have the time or resources to hire, so they're constantly finding ways to make the process easier. For example, they just launched a feature to help you write job descriptions. That's great. If you want to take part in that, post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Once again, linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right. It is Monday, March 18th. I bring that up again because that means that today is the day that the transfer portal opens for basketball. It It's frustrating to me, and that's where I want to talk about it, because one of the NCAA's committee took a look at this in the offseason last summer to say, uh, basically, A, do we need to shorten the length of the portal? Last year, it was open for 60 days in that first kind of trial with it at that level and then also they looked at changing the opening date i if you are here with us was a big proponent of both shortening the period but also starting it later for me it is an unfair thing to teams still playing whether it's in the ncaa tournament or the nit or other things um and um I thought they should have waited till at least the Elite Eight so that um, it, teams wouldn't have to be focusing on preparing for games and starting to make phone calls in the transfer portal so you get behind. And it just doesn't make any sense to me. It's too much to be going on at any one time. But they didn't change it. They kept it the day after Selection Sunday. They did shorten it, though. It's it's down to 45 days from 60. I think that's a good call. But it is open, and so we got to at least mention it today. And I don't even really want to talk needs yet for North Carolina because we don't truly fully know. There's so much possibility yet, and we hope that the Tar Heels have three more weeks of basketball ahead of them, quite frankly. But one area that we certainly know that we need is an Armando Baycott replacement. Unless the staff thinks that Jalen Washington is that guy. If so, I still think you need some bulk behind him. I know there's James Aconquo, but you just need some, like, what if this year's team had had no Armando Baycott? It was already hard enough to contend with DJ Burns from NC State. Can you imagine if Jalen Washington had been the one to have to do that? Things would 
would have not gone well and in fact would have gone worse than they did on Saturday night. So uh, for me, Carolina, that is that is target number one in the transfer portal is going to find an Armando Baycott replacement. But then, you know, we're going to have to wait on the rest of it. It's going to depend on decisions from guys like RJ Davis and Harrison Ingram. Will RJ elect to use his COVID eligibility and come back for a fifth year? Will Harrison Ingram elect to come back for his senior year for one more run? Um, obviously, we also know Cormac Ryan is done. Do, do Does the Tar Heel coaching staff feel like the guy to replace him is on the roster or that they need to go get somebody or, or going to be one of the freshmen? Um, it sounds like Elliot Cadeau plans to come back, but until we know for sure, um, we won't know for sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so that that's part of it as well. So there's a lot up in the air. Some of it might even uh, be determined by how progress goes these next couple of weeks and how successful the Tar Heels are in terms of decisions that guys like RJ and Harrison and Elliot make. So we're going to have to wait on all of that. But for now, the one thing I do want to say is that the Tar Heels are going to need to find an Armando Baycott replacement. Now, uh, I've left the men's bracket up because just we haven't really gone through the other teams. Mentioned um, Arizona, there's Baylor as the three seed. Obviously, we know that recent history with Carolina facing them in the second round of the 2022 NCAA tournament where Carolina beat them in Fort Worth at the point when Baylor was the defending national champions. Alabama is the four seed, an elite offensive team with a woeful defense. Uh, and so I would expect if if Carolina kept progressing, I would expect Alabama to have already lost by that point. St. Mary's is the five seed uh, from the West Coast Conference where Gonzaga is usually the champion. St. Mary's won both the regular season and conference tournament champion chip for West Coast Conference this year. So we've got all these teams. Clemson is in the bottom half of the bracket. They're the sixth seed. We know what they're capable of. New Mexico is the team they'll play, the 11th seed. Uh, they've, they've just made a great run in the Mountain West. So um, that's just a little bit more of a look at the men's bracket. We'll obviously, again, dive more into that in depth later in the week. I just wanted to give a little bit uh, of an overview of that right here as we begin talking. But um, also want to get into mentioning that the women's, remember the women's bracket used to be revealed on Monday night, the day after selection Sunday, but now it is also revealed on Sunday. So we know that the women are the eight seed. They're going to be playing Michigan State, interestingly enough, who the men could face as well. Michigan State, the nine seed. That game is going to be Friday morning, pre-noon. Uh, this coming Friday, March 22nd in Columbia, South Carolina at 1130 a.m. Eastern time on ESPN2. So uh, you talk about noon tips. You got to get up and get going even half an, early, half an hour earlier than that. And the problem is, even if Carolina is able to get past the Spartans, you know who's lurking? I just said the game's played in Columbia, South Carolina. That's right. It's the Gamecocks, and they are an absolute juggernaut. So going to be a tall task for Courtney Banghart's team. We'll see how they're able to do. <laughs> Quick whip around of the rest of Carolina athletics action this weekend, and then we'll get out of here. Baseball was a little bit of a tough weekend down in Miami against the Hurricanes. Tar Heels lost Friday and Saturday before winning 18-6 to on Sunday softball team unfortunately was swept this weekend by number 14 clemson down in south carolina uh unfun there men's tennis split uh the weekend down in florida themselves won against number 13 florida state on friday four to two but then lost at miami on sunday women's lacrosse lost at syracuse number seven on saturday that scored a, a beat down syracuse won 20 to 5 unfortunately but men's lacrosse won at stony brook 12 to 8 on saturday all right guys the madness is here it's great if you want to come be part of it with us join the locked on tar heels discord community the link is in the show notes it's free to come be a part of if you haven't subscribed to the show please do that on video and audio smash the like button so we know you were here if you haven't left a review of the show it'd be great if you would do that it'd help us out so much. Want to remind you that it's always a great day to be a Tar Heel, especially when we're getting one seeds. We'll talk again tomorrow, but until then, peace. <laughs>